Greetings in the name of the Most High, yes. I am grateful for everything that God has done for me, especially the last year where I was remembering just just a couple of moments ago as I was pouring myself an espresso. And um, I've had that espresso for going since the 80s, I think, or I got into it, whatever. But I am grateful for that. Um, But the bottom line is, uh, this time last year, I, I could not walk. And I couldn't walk using a walker. I could get maybe a few yards, maybe the length of the hallway of our our home here. I could get from maybe the kitchen to the bed with a walker, and that's that's about it. Going across the living room and all that, I had to. I couldn't do the stairs. I had to kind of go down sideways. Anyway, but before that, in the hospital, I couldn't walk at all, not even with a walker. And and so that was a uh, really something to remember. And then today, I am able to walk even, you know, without a cane and without, not that far because I get uh, fatigued a little easily. You know, you need to kind of build that up, but... I'm able to walk. And then a year ago, I could not walk at all. And I didn't think, you know, back in that day, I really didn't think I was going to walk again because the legs were so shot, but everything. And we never, you know, the other thing is we never ever dealt with the the legs. We dealt with a, an infection and clearing that up. But we never dealt with the legs. It was just like, go to rehab, done. And that was the only recommendation. So now I'm looking on that progress, and I'm thinking, well, if I can go that fast in a year, maybe this next year I could get completely back to normal. Uh, So I'm very grateful for that. My frustration, and unfortunately it ended up me yelling on, on Facebook, but my frustration has been you know, being misunderstood by Christians, for one thing, um, you know, which which um, I guess can't be avoided. I guess I'm just going to have to go with losing those friends. And um, recently the criticism was that the uh, something called the Witch Awards or whatever, which is really a tabloid, out of L.A. that deals with horror movies and weird stuff gave us an award. And they have this logo of a witch. And then I had people confronting me saying, the witches are rewarding you. You know, like you're doing something wrong. And uh, I just look at that and, I, you know, and then I look at the election of how many, you know, and now I'm in a, in a space where I can talk about the the corruption in government is so vast here we may have to go through a bloodbath in order to write it you know it's just like i kind of of the mind of maybe had we gone through a civil war back in 2020 uh we would get be getting beyond it now people would be tired of it but it, it seems that you know people are itching to to fight and um they don't want to reason anymore they just want to fight and then they put their they stick their selected candidate there, and there are people cheering it on. And I wonder, you know, where are these people? And mainly, they come from the two coasts, from the big cities on the two coast, on the left and the right coast. And unfortunately, um, this is also where the think tanks are. This is also where the uh, you know, where the, where the, uh, a lot of the trouble gets started. So I would say if I were Putin looking to nuke, I would nuke the, the, uh, Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast, um, you know, to, to, to get rid of the problem of, first of all, the think tanks, all, all they do is think about war these days. 
and and new weapons that can you know kill masses of people and or bioweapons like covid that they put out there as a natural novel disease uh which they then provide the uh the cure and if you don't take it you're some kind of pariah this is you know and then we're always looking over our shoulder wondering when the next drop is going to be i wonder if they're going to spike the airplane or they're going to put it uh they're going to release another virus on us. So we were locked down and, and they've expressed that that's their desire to lock us down. And, and, you know, I've concluded they obviously hate us, but the dictates come from the two coasts. So geographically, and we're talking about the, and the people that, that are most, if you look at the blue and red map about who is a voting, say for Trump versus who's voting for Kamala Harris, uh, you'll see that it's the left and right coast. It's the Pacific and the Atlantic coast where the voters are. Those are the people voting for Kamala uh, Harris and war. And I, I, you know, it's so funny because these same kinds of people were marching against war back in the 60s. And I remember they were marching against war and they, they say they wanted peace, but, but they don't want you to have Jesus. You can have peace, but no, Jesus is a bigot. Jesus is homophobe, transphobe. And then yesterday, the the almighty proclamator, one of the most embarrassing moments in American history, and this is what made me blow my top and get so angry, you have this guy Biden running his diarrhea mouth, and he's out there saying that basically Christians are garbage. Right, because the he was saying Trump followers, but Trump followers are mainly, I would say, they're mainly Christians. They're not all Christians see things alike. I'm, for example, been kicked out of evangelical churches, Catholic churches. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm a pariah in those groups. So I'm more like a John the Baptist type, I guess, more of a, of a loner, I suppose. But a lot of that's just beyond. It's not my fault. You know, that's just the way God made me. And uh, when I was diagnosed psychiatrically, they diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder. And I had some fun yesterday looking it up. And apparently when you have this disorder, it's for life. And when it when it acts up, you scream and yell and you you uh, you act impulsively and you and you, you, you tend to eat. You, people that have this disorder die 20 years on average, 20 years before the regular population. So it's the most um, death-providing disorder that there is. And it, gets, it doesn't get much attention because it kind of blends in with other things. Uh, anyway... And of course, the, the cure is, right, Jesus. Because, it, you, you know, the whole point of therapy for a, a, a what is it called? A, for a BPD person, the whole point of therapy is to stop that person from doing something impulsive, like jumping off a bridge, like hurting somebody else. Like just being, you know, um, you know, speaking their mind at a time where we're, we're, you know, you know, not following social signals and therefore scaring people or whatever it is. Uh, and and um, I just find this interesting. They also say the preponderance of, our, of successful artists in the world all have BPD. And the IQ rates of BPD is higher than the, the mass population. So I'm seeing something kind of like uh, an autism type of diagnosis, but it's, it's a little different. But it's the same kind of result. In other words, these people cannot blend in with society. Cannot. They can't blend in at Thanksgiving dinner that's coming up. They can't. They can't be anything but suspected and, and be, being feared because 
people don't know what they're going to do because they're unpredictable. You know, when they get impulsive, they could do anything, including lose their life or lose someone else's life. So, you know, apparently one of the things they listed was wild driving is one of the problems. And um, like I said, Jesus being the cure, that means that all a lot of BPD, I can tell you because I'm, I'll do better than the psychiatrist now and better than the psychologist. First of all, it comes from abuse at an early age, usually. And in fact, they have programs to abuse children to make them higher IQs. Right. So abuse leads to a higher IQ, a higher, why? Because the abusee has got to be on the lookout for the next abuser because they don't want to be abused. Nobody does. And it makes them more keen as to their surroundings. And when you're more keen, your IQ goes up as you can then start doing advanced. And I used to do advanced math in my head. You know, I, I I couldn't sit there and compute it like point by point. I would just flash on the answer. Boom, 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 like that. And uh, so they so they had me in the program. They had me in their program to do uh, remote viewing and all kinds of things when we were kids. And uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, uh, abuse, I finally kind of fought back um, against them at one point. And then all hell broke loose because then, see, now I'm not containable. Now I need to be reined in. Now I need to be beaten down and broken. Now I need to be hurt real, real bad. You know, bludgeon that kid into submission. And you know and I know that that kind of attitude toward anything toward medicine, toward, toward government, toward diplomacy, toward anything is a very, it's, it's like going back to the caveman era. It's, it's, it's basically a very uncivilized thing to do when you don't know what to do, panic and then bludgeon, boom, 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 hit him with a hammer, hit it until it complies, which is the whole point of labeling people with these various, uh, DSM three, DSM four, diagnostic uh, manuals to, to label somebody. But really what they're saying is watch out for this one. These BPDs are antisocial and they could be a real problem in society. So we need as many people with eyes on the target as possible. And here comes your gang stalking. You getting my drift, baby? Well, I've given it a lot of thought. I mean, if anyone knows anything about it, it's got to be me. Since my history with all this goes way, way back. And uh, But I do find it interesting how the best, the most talented people in the world are BPD. In terms of the art, they say the arts, but that also goes to science as well. Because the really cutting edge piece of part of science is creative, right? Use creativity to find new solutions. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they create us through abuse and then they need us. And then they want us to comply and admit, well, they want me to admit, oh, well, I have, you know, they've always wanted me to admit that I'm sick and there were no people there that night, where was there Woody? Woody, were there people there that night? No, there weren't any. Okay, you're free to go to go get a job, go play drums at the bar or whatever. Gee, thanks. But we're going to be watching you. Yeah, you might do something. We have to alert the others about your situation, that you're very unpredictable and, and, and it could lead to violence. I'm not going to hurt anybody. If anything, I hurt myself. Well, that's just it. We can't have you hurt yourself, so we got to keep eyes on you. You need to have a safety net. But I just met Jesus. 
oh, well, that screws everything up. That means you're certifiably insane. Then we'll just write you off as insane. And there is no cure. You're a derelict bum. You are garbage. Thank you, Mr. Biden. You are garbage, every one of you. So, you know, but what I was kind of going over these symptoms with my friend Larry, I was saying, Larry, you fill the box on like almost every one of these points, don't you? <laughs> he goes, yep. And uh, and that's interesting, isn't it? That he's an award-winning director, very creative, very talented. He said he was looking for a way to process his pain and the best way was through through the arts and particularly through filmmaking. And that to process the pain from the, you know, from abuse, from mommy issues. So we have kind of a kinship there. But I mean, the point is, um, don't abuse children. That's really, the, you know, the point. The other thing is, when they want to hit you with, uh, I mean, I don't know if you can get to the point of seeing the shrink once a week. But see, it's not just the shrink now. You're, you're getting medication, like my daughter, my late daughter. And, and um, you're being expected, uh, you, you know, to check in every week to make sure that medication's working. Have you had any episodes of sudden impulsivity, like just flying to another country or getting married to some stranger or, you know, or, or, or you know, punching somebody in the mall? Have it? Is, is, uh, any incidents like that? Nope. Well, then I think the medication's working great. We'll see you next week at the same time. Okay. 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 Dr. Munstein. I was just thinking the, uh, the, and, 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 oh, and BPD are most likely to, you know, have, panic attacks. And like I said, the, when, when you get to the life, this is no joke. You, you, you know, when you research disease, you go, well, cancer, if you have kidney failure, if you have heart failure, you have, you know, your lifespan instead of 75, maybe 72. But on this one, they say on average, these people live 20 years less than the main population, 20 years my eyes just about popped out and I reconfirmed it several times on the internet from like, you know, Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins and 20 years. And, and then I told Trish, I said, you know, but a lot of this is not suicide. It's, you know, somehow they got, they were in the wrong place. They were impulsive. They, they did something they shouldn't have done and they got killed or someone killed them. They spoke up and said the wrong thing in the bar. Someone cold cocked them and they died. Whatever. Uh, you know, and then the ones who do live tend to become recluses in society. In other words, to drop out of all social, of all relationships, because all relationships have already failed for that person. They've all failed because nobody understands. The world is intolerant. Because it is a simulation. Picture it like a factory. And the products being made go through a QC, quality control. And the ones that don't make it get kicked out off the line. That's exactly what you're dealing with. Through no fault of their own and through fault of others, which they don't want to admit to, they want to... You look for the locus or the lo or the beginning of BPD in a person. So how'd they get that way? Not any of them, uh, nobody has a clue. Nobody knows anything about that. Oh, I don't know where it could just, you know, some kids have it, you know. And uh, the important thing is to catch it because therapy is really, talk therapy is the only way to really handle it. And the role of the therapist is to make sure that that person doesn't go off the rails. 
So they check in every week or three times a week or two times a week or five days a week with, with the idea that they're um, being, being counseled. Like, for example, if you break up with someone or if you just suddenly aren't seeing someone again or you break off with a friend and you maybe don't make a big deal out of it, but the therapist will be alarmed and go, well, what happened? See, it's your fault because you have problems with relationships. So let's, none of your relationships stick. They all break. You get into relationships with a lot of bad people too. They all break. So it all break. It's all both broken. The whole thing, your whole life. It's just one big broken record. Only it's not on repeat. It breaks the stylus. It breaks the turntable. It'll break the stereo system. It breaks the people listening. It breaks everything. It breaks the com compliance and complacency that people have with going along with the simulation, following the rules, doing what you're supposed to be doing, living the way you're supposed to live, fulfilling society's expectations of you. And if you don't, you feel guilty and ashamed, which they therapists love to, to, to put on you. It's your fault. Remember that. It's from a line from Girl Next. Got a lot of little nuggets in there. Well, here's one. Just remember, it's always your fault. No matter what happens, it's your fault. I don't care. It could happen down the street. It's your fault. It, it may have nothing to do with you, but it's your fault. If it occurs to your mind to think about or dwell on, it's your fault. If anything breaks up or anyone does anything mean to you, it's your fault. If you're targeted and followed around and you're scared about that and you go talk to your therapist, it's your fault, buddy. It's your fault. Because you don't fit into the matrix. And the matrix can't handle anyone that doesn't fit. And most everyone does fit. Thank you very much. They fit just fine. Except for you. What's your problem? And yet everyone gloms on to these people because they, they want to be shown the way out. Instinctively, they know that these people are not conformed to that world system and maybe they know the way out. So, you know, quite often they become cult leaders. That ends badly because that attracts the uh, feds. And the next thing you know, they infiltrate. And you got another Jim Jones in your hands. No, you're isolated, buddy. And you're going to stay isolated. And it's always your fault. And if you're having trouble handling the pain, then you need to go seek therapy. Where you go in there and you bare your soul, and they try to keep you off the rails to keep you from killing yourself, keep you from getting in trouble, stop you from blowing relationships, keep you on the job so you can earn a living. You know what I mean. That kind of thing, practical. And you can forget about the arts. It's too unstable. There's too many unstable people in there. It's not legitimate for you. You should be just uh, punching a card and, and uh, you know, assembling something on an assembly line. And not thinking about what might this all be about. That's the greatest threat and we must stop you from any form of creative thinking. And if you don't listen to that, then we're going to beat you into submission, okay? I may just be the therapist, but I have a whole team of therapists behind me. I have the entire medical establishment behind me. I have the entire society behind me, not you. It's your fault why this society is the way it is. And I'm the kind of person that's here to serve and here to fix it, to make sure it runs smoothly, Geez, I never thought I'd get so wrapped up in this particular subject, folks. So when they diagnose you with anything, 
as always, Jesus is the way out. He is the therapist. If you're okay with him, you're okay. And he will stop us from uh, being self-destructive, becoming a drunk on the on the corner, um, getting you know winding up in jail for the rest of our lives. You know that kind of thing happens to these BPD people. I didn't know. You know, I, I wanted to distinguish what's the difference between BPD, schizophrenia, and psychosis. You know. And there's subtle differences. I was actually researching the term transference. Have you heard of that? That's where a patient's going to therapy. And they're, you know, I mean, I'm just going back to all my therapy. And the patient transfers, say, the mother's personality onto the therapist. And now it's like the therapist is mommy. And then they can even do role playing. I mean, it becomes quite serious. The idea at the end is to transfer it back so that it's all set right. But that can go on for a while. It's called transference. It happens. You're dealing with mommy issues. Your therapist becomes mommy. Yeah, that happens. And uh, I think it's a bad thing, personally. It's almost like, uh, like not channeling, but it's almost uh, like conjuring a demon. And um, it's insane spiritual warfare. So BPDs are considered to be, um, if the state creates them, they're special. They're special children with special skills. They can do remote viewing and bring down airplanes, you know, things like that. Uh, that they learned from the Tibetans, you know, who were remote viewers, but they were remote practitioners of, of dark magic and sorcery. And so the prayer and, and enchanting was a mode or a way into the power to then affect the world through being silent and being in a state of trance. So Madame Blavatsky and others took on the Tibetan forms, you know, took them to Europe. And it became kind of canonized within the uh, occult practitioners. And theosophy and, you know, Aleister Crowley and all the rest of it. Yeah, and ordinarily these people might be a therapist. They might be your therapist. They might be your psychiatrist. That doesn't prevent them from dabbling or maybe even using you as an experiment. It's so tempting. There you are, unconformed. You're just like a lamb to the slaughter, and they are a big bad wolf, and they're, and they're salivating when they see you. Yeah, come on in. We'll get it straightened out. How's your medication? How'd it go this week? Still on the job? Still married, still, well, still seeing friends. And what is it about your friends that make you feel so alienated? Why do you not want to go to the party anymore? You feel picked on. What do you mean they pick on you? They tease you? That all of that, do you think you have something to do with that? You think you draw that to yourself? You think your behavior or your flamboyant behavior might have something to do with drawing people that might want to squelch you down, stop you from being so obvious in the room? Or is it your lack of being able to read social cues? A nod and a wink is no different to you. A nod, a wink a hand gesture, all the same thing. And then the therapist says, you know, that's your fault. You know, they're signaling you and you're not picking up on the, they're raising their eyebrows and they're trying to get you to understand. Is you know, time for the orgy. <laughs> and well, the only reason for that, of course, is to get you down 
as a participant for the purpose of dot, 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 space, blackmail. Why would they want to blackmail you? Because you have certain talents the state wants. What are they? You've got the same ability. They might want to use you to bring down an airplane, although that's usually children. Mm-hmm. Well, children that have sexual trauma can turn to BPD quite frequently, so they're never going to talk about that. There is no origin. It's just the luck of the draw. We've got to fix humanity. We've got to make sure there's no none of these people left. At the same time, we need you. We need you. Show us the way out, please. Every day, the same routine. Every day, they lie. Every day, it's sick. Every day, it's a pain. Every day, it's trouble. Every day, it's bad. Every day, I don't want to see them, and I see them, and I'm disappointed. But that's your fault because you're sick. If you were a normal person, you'd be happy to see people. You'd be grateful for your situation. Instead, you're... Terrified, aren't you? You're not ungrateful. You're t- you're afraid. You're afraid. So you blow off the relationship before it gets too deep. You don't ever apologize to people because you're so busy with the next problem. And your life is a series of problems. And, but it's not my fault. (laughs) Yes, but society will never accept its position in doing harm to you. That is irrevocable. So you're stuck with this your whole life. So you can either comply or fight. I understand that you're afraid. You have every right to be. But society will not ever understand that. They will call that being paranoid and seek to separate you forever. If you don't start playing ball, you're going to be separated and institutionalized. And that will end up being the uh, legacy of your life. On the other hand, if you do comply, all the gifts that you have, all your IQ, everything, everything goes out the window as you're broken down to be some kind of automaton, some kind of guy that punches the clock and, you know, makes the assembly and fills out the paperwork and turns it in and goes home for uh, Saturday and Sunday, goes to church, comes back on Monday. What's so wrong with that? You could have a wife and children, and hopefully they'll grow up without your problem, and the wrong will have been righted as you become demoted. No more of these omnipotent fantasies, please. Ever since you met Jesus, you've been acting like you could fly. What is the matter with you? You need to be beaten down. Well, we'll start with firing you from your job. How's that? And nobody will hire you and your disability runs out. And, uh, you you know, maybe that will be a, and you can still come in here for uh, every week and we'll see how you feel. Maybe one day you'll admit that you're having a pretty hard time. And then we can start to make progress. Sound good? Sound good, folks? Does that vision of hell sound wonderful? Because that's the world. And there is no exception anywhere on earth. Not even in in, in non-literate cultures. No exception. The boys 
will be separated from the tribe and their mothers and put in a terrifying journey that they may not make it through. <clears throat> and when they survive to the other side of that journey that the men put them through, they're now considered a man. And the women have to act accordingly. And that person may even get a new name. That ritual has not ended for society. We just have other ways of doing it. Yes, the whole thing is a joke. And you better not see it that way or you're going to be a real problem. And I still tell the artists out there, be disruptive. Be the problem. In so doing, you show the way. You show what this is. You you reveal this to people so they can wake up and realize, stop working. Stop trying to make a living. Stop feeding the machine. Stop being a slave. Because we live in a country, America is slavery. There's no freedom here. You start acting like a free man and you'll be arrested. Oh, no, no, your, your kids and your wife will turn you in. Don't worry. We, we have this covered. We've been doing this a long time, okay? There is a purpose to all this. The countries are irrelevant. What is relevant is what's inside you. And that's what we, and we will harvest that in due time. And you will be grateful for the nice little life you have in due time. And you'll go from a rebel to a participant and no one will be prouder of you than us. Da, 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 da. Ba, 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 fuck. Da, 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 da. Da na 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 na. Me 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 me. You 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 you. The proof to the nine that our shackles were still there. <laughs> okay, that's got to be. Uh, I apologize to the normies out there that may be offended oh my you're so offended look at you well you better go out and cast your vote for Kamala Harris then or maybe Trump will save you keep believing in the political process you made progress this time um I can't do it better than that, folks. Preserve this one. I don't know what it's going to be called, but this will be one for the, you know, it should be on your, in the background. If you just want to clear the room, turn it on back there. Amen. <laughs> hey, God bless. Seriously, God bless. I'm not, not no mocking of the Lord. No. That's where I know the Lord wants us to know all this. The truth about all this. So we can have the proper motivation to what? Get the fuck out of here. That's the whole point. Those who make this their home are fools. Amen. Okay. <laughs>